Hello everyone and welcome back to Drunk on Wonderlust. It's me, Kerry, and today I am staying in the Riverside campsite in Malham uh, because we're doing a group hike with my officially smashed it hiking club and we're going up to Malham Cove and then we're going to have a meal tonight down the pub. It's going to be loads of fun and we're going to camp out again tonight. Now, last night I was reviewing um, a product from Flextail Gear and it is their new Zero R05 sleeping pad. I've got the mummy version just here and uh, yeah, let's take a closer look. Okay, over to Danny. So it's really important for us that our sleeping pads are lightweight because when we do long distance trails, our bags are already so heavy. And this one is great because it's only 520 grams. It's not quite as light as my Thermarest one, but because it's so much cheaper, the difference is minimal. And yeah, I recommend. This airbed's quite good because it's got a two part valve. So all the air won't escape when you're blowing it up. So another great factor about this one is how insulated it is. It has an R value of 5.6, which is a lot better than my other one, which only has an R value of about four something. It's a lot deeper than my other one. So I had a look on the website to find out how it keeps you so warm. And apparently it's got aluminium film insulation. Now I'll be real, I have absolutely no idea what that means, not a Scooby-Doo, but I guess we'll find out tonight when Dizzy tests it to see if it keeps her warm. Now unfortunately I can't come on the Malham Cove hike because I am in a show. I do musical theatre and I'm going to be in rehearsals but I'm going to be coming on some of the long distance hikes this year so I can't wait to see everyone, meet all the new ones and yeah I'll hand you back over to Dizzy. Okay so thoughts after sleeping my first night with the new Flextail sleeping pad. What did I think? Well, I've got to say it was very, very comfortable. Now it's deeper than the uh, Thermarest pad that I've got. Uh, so I found it like, it was really, really comfortable to lie on. I was getting no cold sensations coming up from the ground. It kept me nice and warm in that respect. I really couldn't fault it, to be honest. Um, didn't make too much noise when you're moving around on it. Um, the only thing I will say, well, it's my own fault. I pitched on a slope because it was raining last night and I just chucked my tent down. I was like, that'll do, sod it. And yeah, so I was on a slope and I was kind of sliding down the mattress in the night, but I think you'd do that with any any mattress if you pitch on a slope like me, idiot. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it really. I've, I've got to say, I'm very, very impressed. I'd highly recommend it to a friend. Can't believe the value for money you know, being that you can get hold of this for under £100 when, you know, a similar version of the same R rating is going to be, you know, well over that. And not only that, I have got a cheeky discount code to give to you if anybody is interested in getting a new sleeping pad and wants to try out the uh, Flextel uh, one. So discount code is at the bottom of the screen here. So please, you know, take advantage of it. And the next one, thing we're going to be looking at is the new pump. Let's take a look. Okay, so I was very, very impressed with the Flextail sleeping pad. Uh, the next thing they've sent me to have a quick look at as well is the new pump, the new sleeping pad pump. Now I've been using the Flextail mini pump for a while now and I love it. I can't fault it really. Uh, but they said they've got a new one out on the market which is even lighter and even smaller and it is the Flextail Zero pump. I mean, look, you can see by the size right there the difference um, but we're going to take a closer look I used this last night to blow up my sleeping pad uh, it worked like a treat but let's see the uh, difference between these two pumps they call it the world's smallest sleeping bag pump and weighing in at only 34 grams I think they may be right the new zero pump is operated by a rechargeable battery which you can charge via the mains with a cable provided it takes around a minute to inflate a sleeping pad when the battery is fully charged and can inflate up to 25 times on a single charge. Another fantastic product, especially for anyone trying to save on pack weight. Don't forget that 15% discount code, Kerry15. Woo! Okay, review time over. It's time to meet my hiking club and explore Malham Cove. If you're interested in joining my free club, you can find details on my website. <laughs> officiallysmashedit.com Over to James. We are here 
we're going to start a nice gentle walk along the road. Uh, we'll go up to Mallon Cove. You can't see it there. Eh? Oh, there's Mallon Cove. So we'll be at the foot of Mallon Cove. And up the steps. It's a nice little circular walk. Little butty shop here. Butty van. Anyone who's hungry. Uh, to go down with Scar. Look at that. It's fantastic. <laughs> Uh, you can go for a little swim in Janet's Foss. Lovely. You brought, your, brought your speedos, Adrian. Uh, I'm, I might have left them in the youth hostel, but I'll go, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm going for that. Okay. I can roll and then we'll follow the river all the way back. Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. Our walk today was guided by little James, who kindly stepped in as he knew the area and it was my first time visiting. Our first stop was Malham Cove itself, which was incredibly beautiful. So this is uh, Mr Ward's Geography 101 and we are here at the amazing uh, Malham Cove. Now, does anybody know why uh, if rock is permeable and lets water through, coming out the bottom here, why is this rock shaped like a waterfall when obviously there's no water able to pass through it? Uh, does anybody know? Uh, Kerry, do you know? I do now, Mr Ward. Okay, Kerry, what's the answer? The answer is, in the ice age, it all froze over and the water was unable to be absorbed into the rock and come out the bottom. So it had to go over the edge like a waterfall. But then when the ice melted and it started to be able to be more like a sponge again, that's why it's not a waterfall stop, today. Stop, stop, you put me out of a job. That was, <laughs> that was really good. That's A-star, well done. Thank you yes. very much. A-star for me. Um, Thank you, Mr Ward. No problem. More facts coming up shortly. More part two coming up shortly. Fun fact, Mr Ward was actually my geography teacher all through secondary school. I've missed his spot quizzes. Up next, we had to climb up a number of steps to the top of the cove and the views were wonderful. Potter. So, in the Harry Potter films, in the Deathly Hallows Part 1, there is a scene where Harry and Hermione are zapped around the universe and they actually land here on the top of Malham Cove amongst all the limestone pavement. Uh, probably something to do with trying to kill Voldemort or something like that. Or he was just trying to look at the amazing countryside and the amazing views halfway through the film. Lovely. Yes. There you go. There you go, a bit of info there for all you Harry Potter fans. We all really enjoyed climbing over the limestone rock across the top. Hiking trail season is coming up, so this was a great warm up hike. There's Mark in training for the West Highland Way. Look at him go, he's smashing it. What's the signpost for? One of my favourite trails, the Pennine Way. The Pennine Way. You've done this one, haven't you? I've done this one, yes I have. Yeah. yeah. I have some awesome trails coming up in the next few months, so look out for the videos. In May, me and some of the group are hiking the Loch Ness 360 trail, and the day after we finish, I'm climbing Ben Nevis. Then in June, I'm heading back up to finish the Cape Wrath Trail with Steve. We made it to the butty van, just in time for a lunch break. Where are we headed to now? Gordale Scar. Maybe it's gas. What's that? It's a lovely waterfall. Ah. It's quite impressive. Looking forward to it. And impressive it was. What a beautiful area this was. I could see why the hike was so popular. Right, back to the butty wagon for ice creams before we made our way over to Janet's Foss. The sun had been shining, but it was still a bit chilly to attempt to swim today. I bet it would be nice in the summer though. Look at that water. Mm. 
time to make our way to the pub for a well-deserved pint or two. What a wonderful day with some fantastic company. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.